OK, on to position vectors. So far you've looked at displacement vectors, which are just showing you a movement from one point to another. Position vectors are a little bit different because they have a location. And they start from the origin, so they look like this. So this particular vector OA is the position vector of the point A. It's telling us where it is in relation to the origin. If we're using coordinates like this, this vector OB has coordinates 4, 1, so the position vector of that point B is then this column vector 4, 1. And next we need to look at Cartesian unit vectors. Now don't worry about the word Cartesian. All that means is that we're doing this on sets of axes. But uh, the important part is the unit vectors. So these are used to locate a point in 3D mostly. And unit vectors have a magnitude equal to 1. That's why it's called a unit vector. It's one unit long. We can have them in three directions according to the three planes when we're talking about 3D. Of course, if we're in 2D, that would just be in the two directions. We've got I along the X plane, J in the Y direction, and K in the Z direction. So you can put those together to make any point that you want in those dimensions. So we're looking at this vector here for P. So P is this point at 452. The vector OP tells us the, where it is in relation to the origin. So we have this column vector 452. We can put those together combining with those unit vectors to write this in a different way. So this would be the same as 4 lots of i plus 5 lots of j plus 2 lots of k. And it's like giving directions from the origin up to our point P. Now let's have a little look at parallel vectors. So we have these two vectors parallel to each other, but one is bigger than the other. So this one we'll call it 2i plus 3j minus k. And this one is 4i plus 6j minus 2k. So you can see all of those coefficients of the i, j, and k. Um, one is twice the other. So if your vectors are parallel, one is always a multiple of the other. You could also have it going the opposite direction. It's still parallel. This would just be a negative multiple. And here's our example question. We've got this vector v and we need to figure out if these following vectors are parallel, equal or neither in relation to v. So have a little look down the list and see if you can spot what each one would be. And here are some answers. So this first one we can write as two times that vector so it's parallel. This one, if we multiply out those brackets, we get the same as our vector v, so that's equal. This one is a negative multiple of v, so it's parallel. And the last one, we can't make it a multiple of v in any way. It's also not equal to v, so it's neither parallel or equal. Here's our next example. We've got a triangle ABC with vertices at the coordinates given. We want to find the vectors for AB, BC and CA and we're going to put them in the form of um, unit vectors. After we've done that we're going to find the perimeter of the triangle. So first let's try drawing out what that looks like. So a being at 2 minus 1, 4, we can draw that position vector from the origin. Same for B and C. 
and we're looking at this triangle here that joins up those points A, B, C. So first we're going to do the vector A, B. To be able to get from A to B, we have to travel along a route that we already know about. So we have to use the vector O, A and O, B to get there. So you can see we've got to go backwards along OA, so we've had to make it a negative vector there. Put that all together and we get our final answer. And we're going to do the same for BC. This time I'm doing it in column vectors just to show you that you can write it that way around and convert it afterwards if you want. And then CA in a similar way each time we've had to go back along the position vector towards the origin, so reversing that first one, and then along the second one, so that we're following uh, the line of vectors that we already know about in order to get from one point to the other. Next we're going to find the perimeter of that triangle now that we've got those three vectors, so I've just copied this across from the last slide. We need to find the length of each line, that's the magnitude of the vectors, and we're using that Pythagoras theorem to do each one. So here we've got the square root of 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 1 squared, giving us root 3. I'm going to do the same on each of the other ones. I just spotted that I wrote down 5k at the beginning instead of 2k at the end of that um, orange vector, so I've just changed that one for you. So we get this root 3, root 89, and root 62 for each of the lengths of the sides of the triangle. Add them all together and we will get the total perimeter. And I know you've all been looking for that perfect maths related pickup line, so here you go. Maybe you can use that next time you uh, are interested in one of the smarter girls out there.